Hello boys and girls, my name is Dez, otherwise known as Mr. Dial Tone. I'd like to welcome you to my online tutorial of how to work with telephones. A couple of things that we'll be covering. Adding new lines, how to repair and troubleshoot existing lines, the various tools, and the various do's and don'ts when working around telephones. Now, some of you may be wondering, why would I want to work on phones? It's such an antiquated technology. This is true. However, if you think of all the modern technology that we have today, voice over IP, PBX, various intercom systems, alarm systems, it all dates back to the basic telephone system. And the guys that work on the modern systems have been previously trained on working with the old stuff. That being said, the next question that some of you are going to ask is, who else might be watching this? Some of you may be AV guys looking to do something else. Maybe you're looking to get a job with an alarm company, a telephone company, maybe even a cable TV company that actually installs voice over IP service. In any case, we will go over the basics, we'll go over the tools, we'll go over what to do, we'll go over what not to do and we will go over how to verify that that service is working. Now some of you may wonder, why would I want to do this stuff myself? Can a telephone company do this? They can, but depending on where you live, it might cost you a little money. Believe it or not, there are still a lot of people in the United States that rely on a landline telephone. Some of these may be people you know, some of these may be people you're friends with, this may even be members of your family. My parents, for instance, they've always had a landline telephone. Even with all this crazy technology, cell phones and Blackberries and wireless internet, a lot of people still rely on a landline telephone because they have an alarm system or because it's more reliable in an electrical failure than, let's say, a voice over IP system. Some of you may even be retired from working in the telephone field. I'm just kind of curious to see if anything's changed. Pretty sure a lot of things have changed if you're an old phone guy from years ago. But I'm not going to give you a history lesson. I want to get down to the basics. I want to go over some of the things that I will be providing you during this online tutorial. So the first question is going to be, what am I allowed to work on when it comes to the telephone lines? If you live in a private house, on the outside of your house will be a gray box that was installed by the local telephone company. It could be AT&T, it could be Verizon. Just seen is called a NID, Network Interface Device. There's two sides to it. One side is the customer side, which you are allowed to open up disconnect or connect new wires to. The other side is for the telephone company technicians only. Do not mess with it. Do not mess with it. If you open that up and you mess something up and somebody has to come out there to fix it, you could get yourself jammed up pretty good. Simply not a bad day. So please don't do it. A good rule is that if it's difficult to reach or you need a special type of tool or especially some type of key to open it up, don't mess with it. That's for the phone company and the phone company only. You go around there, you mess that kind of stuff up, it's not going to be a good day for you. All right. So any, basically anything from the customer side of that gray box to your phones, everything in between, the wiring, the jacks, the phones, the fax machines, all of that stuff, you are allowed to work on. Anything else past that, going back towards the street, going back towards the telephone poles, do not mess with it. That being said, we're going to go on to the next thing, which is safety and the legal Now you don't have to be a safety expert to do this type of work, but you do have to observe two key things, safety and common sense. 
you're the type of person that works around construction sites, maybe you're a carpenter, maybe you do some type of electrical work, maybe you do home improvements, you got a basic understanding of what to do and what not to do when it comes to using basic tools. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're dressed appropriately. I personally recommend wearing some type of long pants that go all the way down to your ankles. You also want to make sure that you're wearing something that's actually going to protect your feet in the event that you were to drop a small tool on it. You don't have to wear construction boots, but definitely something that's going to protect your feet. Why? Because if you were to drop this tool, which is called the punch down tool, which is used for making connections on this type of connecting block here, 25 pairs of wire. If you were to drop this on your foot or drop this tool on your foot and you're not wearing the proper type of footwear, it's not going to be good. I'm pretty sure you don't want to have to go to the hospital and explain why you missed work, why you missed school, whatever the case may be. So make sure you're wearing something on your feet that will protect your feet in the event that you were to drop small tools or maybe even something that you might be installing or replacing. Okay. The other thing is this, especially if you work around electricity, okay, you don't have to memorize the contents of this entire book to know that telephone lines carry electricity. When a phone rings, it's carrying between 90 to 105 volts of alternating current. That would be pretty much the same thing as taking this screwdriver and shoving it into an electric socket. You don't want to get bit by that electricity. So, when in doubt, check it out. Take the extra minute, make sure that that line is disconnected, make sure that there's no dial tone on it. If you were to plug this test phone into a line that you were working on, or if you were physically to connect it to the wiring, and put it on talk mode, and you hear a dial tone, you have a serious problem. You need to disconnect it need to disconnect both of those wires. Why? Because if you were to get a phone call on that line while you're working on it and you're touching something that completes the circuit, if you as a person completes that circuit, not going to be good. Not going to be good. So when in doubt, check it out. Make sure that line is disconnected. You can never go wrong. Remember, safe. Now I know you've seen it in one of my comments that I typed in between segments of this video, but again, if you have a pacemaker, I'm pretty sure your doctor has already squared you away with certain things that you should and should not be around, especially with electronics and other similar devices. Working on the telephone wire, unfortunately, it's just not something that you should be doing. I'm pretty sure you're well aware if something goes wrong and it causes your pacemaker to malfunction, that's not going to be a good day. So please, I'm definitely not a doctor, but I have to inform you that if you have a device such as this, you really shouldn't be work working on telephone lines. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is this. This over here is capable of intercepting a dial tone and intercepting other conversations. Use your head use your head. Don't think that just because you know what these these wires mean and and all, all kinds of stuff like that that you can just go around and, and connecting and listening in on other people's phone conversations because I'm pretty sure that there are laws that kind of don't allow that depending on where you live. So please use this. Stay tuned for more of